deep breath. I don't know why. Like, I'm intimidated by this topic. So, there's always the question, what is stimming? Or there are questions about stimming. And I haven't really personally shared a lot about stimming. I haven't written anything or done a video about stimming. I usually will kind of point people to other people's videos and articles about stimming that are already existing. Uh, but since it's something that people ask about a lot, I thought it was probably about time that I sat down and did a video and talked about stimming. So if you're interested in learning a little bit about stimming in some pretty plain English, uh, stick around. <laughs> oh, stimming is a really big topic and I don't want to ramble because I could talk about it a lot. Ugh. So, this is stimming technically, I guess. Um, what is it? What is stimming? Or what is it? So let's start with what it looks like or how you know stimming when you see it. Uh, stimming is, can be a lot of things actually. It tends to be something that's tied to the senses and movement. And it can also be kind of tied to a person's emotions. And I'll talk about how those kind of things go together. Uh, but first I'm going to explain like what the stimming looks like. Uh, for some people it can be like rocking. It can be like hand stuff. Clapping your hands, rubbing your hands. Um, just different things like arm motions. And, it, and it, it tends to, by medical definition, be a... Um, what did they say? Repetitive motion. Um, it can be spinning in circles or pacing. It can be making sounds with hands or body or the mouth. And that would be for like to listen to the sound back. It can be like with the senses of sight, uh, staring at things, watching uh, pinwheels and glitter or looking out the road at a beautiful, just staring you know, out the road as things pass by. Um, that's a visual stimming. And the thing that I want to also note before I dive in deeper is that stimming is very natural to all people. And actually, I think all mammals, dogs, and um, if you see animals in the zoo with pacing, the you know, stimming, uh, Cats are stimmy, little critters always rubbing their faces on stuff. Um, so it's it's something that you know everybody does, at least to some extent. Uh, you, you know, it might be subtle for most people. The the you know the majority of the population like you might be like clicking your pen or just maybe something. You know, real real minor. Um, but the main difference with autistic people is the frequency at which autistic people stim and the, I guess, urgency and necessity for autistic people to stim, and I'm throwing that in there, you know, so if you uh, have thoughts on that, please let me know, because I don't want to talk for everybody, I'd like to know what you think. Um, this is, like I said, is a big topic, uh, but with autistic people, stimming is such a big part of their, our neurotype that it is part of the diagnosis. Autistic people stim more frequently than the rest of the general population for the most part. And it seems to be something that is used to regulate energy, like energy in, energy out. Uh, I hope this makes sense. Like. For example, if you scare me or like I get really excited about something or just there is a inward rush of emotion, be it, you know, happy, sad, whatever, the energy, it's a lot of energy going through my body and my brain. And if I'm scared, my hands are going to start doing some really weird stuff. And then for a while, while I calm down, I'm probably going to like, I don't know. I'm going to be weird for a little while, and I'm going to be, like, really twitchy and weird. And I don't know. I just, it's going to take me a while to, like, simmer down. I can't 
chill out. Or if I get really excited about something and I'm talking, I talk with my hands or my hands will just, my hands do whatever they want to do. And it's not something that I am very aware of. Uh, when I'm relaxed, it's just something that happens. Um, and it can be also something that people seek out and it can be pleasurable. Uh, when I was a little kid, I had all these pinwheels and I had like a, a wand with glitter in it and I actually still have it because my grandmother gave it back to me not too many years ago. Um, and it can be something that people can seek out. Um, and then it can, because it is a pleasurable or distracting sensation, it can be something that someone does when they are in pain or distress and it helps regulate the pain or the distress. For example, I slammed my thumb in the door earlier this week and I think I really hurt my thumb. It's in a lot of pain still. And oh my gosh, it hurt. And so I was biting my other hand and just biting it, biting it, biting it. And maybe that is not logical to some people. Like, you're going to hurt your other hand. Why are you biting your other hand? But this is still in a lot of pain. This was in so much pain. I can't even articulate it when I slammed it in the door. <laughs> and the biting, you know, and I didn't break the skin. You can't tell, you know, but some people may hurt themselves, um, is like a distraction from the pain in the other part of my body, which was much worse, but it actually channeled the pain away from this pain. And I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, so that's kind of also my concern with autistic people who may not have a good way to communicate when they're in pain because people are always mentioning nonverbal autistics with self-injurious stems and at least that's been my experience is that something that's going to happen when you are in extreme pain or extreme distress and I'd love for the community's input on this as well uh, because that's kind of what I've read too and I, you know this isn't just my opinion but I don't want to talk for everybody um, so I worry the nonverbal autistics who are hurting themselves may be in extreme pain or distress and just can't communicate it. So that's a worry. Um, but da, 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 what was my triangle here? I was talking about what did you and yeah. And why? Um, and then something else, you know, I wanted to, you know, talk about is how you know, stimming is a very, like I said, very natural energy in, energy out thing that happens for me in my body. Uh, although, you know, I do notice that there are things that I do at home that I wouldn't do, like, everywhere. There are certain things that just aren't appropriate everywhere you go. Like, I'm not gonna, like, I, I talk to myself and I make funny noises and, you know, dance around and I love to sing to myself and I make up little songs in my head when I'm going around doing stuff. Uh, and I sing things to David a lot. And I wouldn't like sing things to my boss and I wouldn't go around the library making noises or quiet office making noises uh, and being disruptive. Although I can be disruptive as I want at home, so I do. Or Dave has to deal with my off-key singing a lot. Um, and, you know, like you wouldn't run through the hallways singing off-key in a quiet place. Maybe you would. I don't know. Uh, but it's just not appropriate, you know. So there's a good, there's like a time and place for certain things. Uh, but I don't want people to feel ashamed. Like they have to hide it out of shame. I think, you know, I just, I, we should be respectful to other humans around us and other people should be respectful to us and, um, you know, like certain things that are maybe like, I don't know, that shouldn't bother anybody. I don't know why people uh, 
should have to like hide it or feel embarrassed by it. it it's just natural. And so hopefully having this conversation about stimming will bring a little understanding to what it is so that next time, you know, someone who doesn't like or see someone stimming and they're like, uh, they're not like, oh, that's a, what's that weirdo over there doing? I'm like, oh, look, someone's stimming. Okay, cool. And they can go about their day and it'll just be no big deal. Wouldn't that be great? And that way people wouldn't be like, oh shoot, like was I rocking just now? That's weird. I should, I should stop doing that. Because that's, that's what you learn to do when you're, especially if you're like growing up undiagnosed, and you just kind of learn, like you'll do like something randomly and some people are like, what the fuck was that? Or that's weird. Like what, what, why, what? You know, people like have that reaction. And so you learn, okay, try really hard not to do that. And your body's like full of energy and it's like trying to do that and so like the minute you walk into the bathroom alone you're like ah. like a dog and they shake and they reset um <laughs> and I don't want people to have to do that I want people to just be able to feel comfortable being themselves and being relaxed and you know I, I just that's so that's my dream about stimming my thoughts about stimming um I'd love to know your thoughts on stimming uh, and anyway guys if you uh, like this video give me a thumbs up so maybe I'll talk more about stimming or we'll do more with stimming and be sure to stay tuned I will talk to you next week bye guys <laughs>